Hi, hello and welcome. So in this video, we're going to talk about ping pong buffers. So as you kind of build up your embedded systems toolkit, um, a lot of people think of embedded systems when you go through school as hardware. Well, embedded systems is all about the software. You know, hardware is pretty easy to put together, but you can spend a long time in software. So you often want to build up a toolkit for, for, for doing neat stuff. Um, because sometimes once you learn like some simple C code, you got to kind of take the next level. So in this video, I want to introduce you to the concept of a ping pong buffer. Uh, it's very commonly used. Um, you'll see it quite a bit. And it's used in the monkey listen firmware. And I just want to kind of give you a little background. So, you know, what is you know, a ping pong buffer. So that that's the question. So we're first going to look at an application um, of a ping pong buffer. So let's think about, you know, a problem. And we'll just use the monkey listen as a problem. So let's say, you know, I'll draw time t here. I have some sort of process that's generating a signal. And I'll draw this in green. And we've got to process this signal in some way, all right? And in this process, we got to do it what's called block by block, meaning I get a block of data, and I'll delimit it like this. Let me just draw this red line, where we have kind of two, two different problems. Um, we have to process the data, and we also have to simultaneously record the next data to do it in real time. All right, so we need some managed way of doing this to process and record, and this is where ping pong buffers come in. So for example, the monkey listen to create a this real time display is that there has to be computations going on in the foreground um, while there are the recording is happening in the background. So for the 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 analogy is or the example is you want, for example, to do FFTs on data, but while you're doing that, you also want to do some recording in the background. So as soon as you're done, you can move on. So this is a good uh, a good problem to where you want a ping pong buffer. So what does a ping pong buffer mean? So what a ping pong buffer is, is two buffers, and I'll just draw them like this. It's two squares. And I'll put some lines in here to indicate that they're like buffers of data, and each cell has data that goes in it. All right, so let me draw this out. And we can put number 0, 1, 3, negative 2, 1, 5. You know, and I'll just, you know, do the same thing. 1, 2, negative 2. I'm just putting some numbers in here. So the whole idea with the ping pong buffer is you have two arrays in memory. Um, and we'll call this array A and array B. And what you do is you always have an index. All right, and I'll call this IDX, that points to one of these buffers. So for example, we need a recording buffer. So maybe we have the index pointing to the recording buffer. And then we have like a process buffer. And so we just define the process buffer as not the index buffer. So what you do with a ping pong buffer is you have two arrays and some sort of pointer that tells you which is the active buffer. So in, in active, by meaning active, it's like which buffer is actually uh, we're dumping data into and which buffer are we not? Because we need one buffer to do processing. So when we start out, for example, with uh, our first set of buffers, we can record an A and then process in B. All right, so what happens is we're doing our processing and we're doing some computation. On the B side, well, on the A side, we're filling up with new data. In that way, 
Whatever is going on in the background, say this um, uh, recording, whatever is going wrong with the background isn't affecting the foreground because the foreground may need to do operations on this buffer. So what you then do is whenever your process is done with the one buffer and the recording is done on the other, you ping, the word ping pong comes in where you just flop A and B, meaning that the index, instead of pointing to this buffer, the next time you go around points to this one, and then your process goes here. And we start working on this buffer, and I'll draw the blue X's. And then when we're working on this buffer, the recording process goes on in this buffer. So the whole reason it's called a ping pong buffer, it, it's as simple as this, is that you have a foreground buffer in which you're doing something, and then a background buffer in which you're doing something else, and then under some condition, when we're done recording or done processing, you swap them. You just, and that's where the ping pong comes from. You just do, you know, the swap. So that's kind of a graphical picture of what's going on. Uh, let's look at some actual code. So I, I have an example here, and I want to show you an implementation of a ping pong buffer. Now, um, this is not the only way to do it. There's probably a hundred ways in C code to do a ping pong buffer. This is just a way I'm trying to do it for clarity, just so you can kind of see how it works, because there's some more elegant ways to do it. I'm just going to show you a fairly straightforward implementation. So this is the, we're going to take a look at the monkey listen software. Um, and the monkey listen uses a ping pong buffer uh, system to do both recording and foreground FFT processing. So let's take a look at the buffer setup. So the first thing I want to show you is that I have two buffers. I call mic buffer one and mic buffer two each of 128 points. Now, I could have just as well, I made two different 128-point arrays. I could have chosen to do a two-dimensional array. I just did it. I just did it this way. Um, so I statically allocated two arrays um, that represent the two buffers. Now, the next thing I do and uh, is I create two pointers, um, one for the back buffer and one for, I call it the back buffer and the active buffer. Where the back buffer is what is 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 what's going to be used to uh, dump in data that's coming into the microphone in the background, and then the active buffer is what is actually going to be used for processing microphone data. Um, excuse me, data. Now to kind of sort out which buffer is currently active or passive, I have this thing called buffer pointer. It's going to be a number 0 or 1 that kind of determines when I need to do a ping pong or a buffer swap, how to do the swap. Now, the last thing, and these aren't directly related to the ping pong buffers, but I have a variable that tells me when I'm actually capturing audio data to tell me no, when I'm com complete and which sample um, I'm currently at. Now, there's going to be a, like I said, you may have a different way of implementing this, but this is just one way of doing it, uh, just to kind of give you an example. So the first thing we need to do with a ping pong buffer is initialize it. So what I'm going to do is first say initialize the buffer pointer to zero. And when the buffer pointer is zero, my active buffer points to mic buffer one, and my back buffer points to mic buffer two. All right. And the reason I use these pointers are just to have nice ways um, to refer to the buffers without using the names buffer one and buffer two. Now, it is 100% possible to do this all with a double dimensioned array, but I like this approach because I think it's a little bit easier to show when you're, when, the, the, the first time you see it. So once again, I have this pointer here, is it going to be a number zero or one to indicate which buffer is the active and which was the back buffer. And then I just initialize the pointers to the actual buffers of data, um, 128 pointers. So in the foreground routine, whenever it's time to compute the FFT, I simply always do that on the active buffer. 
And that's why I just have a nice pointer to the active buffer. I just know where it's at. All right. Now, the back buffer, and let me show you where, in this case, in this code, my back buffer is where I'm actually storing a sample. And that happens in, in this case, in interrupt routine. Whenever I get, uh, I'm ready to start a new conversion, I take the results, say, from an A to D converter sample and dump it in the back buffer at a certain index in that back buffer. In this case, there's 128 points. So I fill up. 128 points, and whenever I get to 128, I simply have a, uh, a flag that says, um, I reset it to zero saying, I'm done. I don't have any more data to put in. And that's what's gonna be used to trigger the ping pong, the buffer swap. So I'll go really quickly through the code, and there's another video giving a more detailed explanation of everything else in the monkey jam code. Um, I'm sorry, the monkey listen code. So in this case, uh, I compute my FFT, you know, I draw it to the screen. And then once I draw it to the screen, I simply wait to see when is my back buffer done filling up. Um, now, depending on the complexity of what's going on in the foreground, that might actually get done before the background. But the thing I sit and wait for is the background buffer um, to get done. And the way I know that's done is I have a flag called capture active, which gets reset to zero when it's done. So you notice I sit here in a while one loop. I just wait for that to be done. So once capture active gets zero, I get to this point in the code, and this is where the ping pong occurs. So I simply look at, is my buffer pointer, my index for the ping pong, zero or is it a one? If it's a zero, then I swap the buffers. I make active buffer, mic buffer two, the back buffer, I make it mic buffer one, and I just set my buffer pointer flag to one. If if it was the opposite, if I got to this point and my current buffer pointer was one, that means I have to swap my buffers the opposite way. Active buffer is mic buffer one, and the back buffer is mic buffer two. So, so that's it. This is just the ping pong approach. It's very quick. It's very easy to implement. Um, and from there, there's really nothing else. Once you get the ping pong set up, the only thing you got to do is have some sort of flag that tells you when to swap buffers, and then you go for it. And then what's nice is that you have two pointers, the active buffer and the back buffer, that tell you, you know, which buffer to use. So your actual software doesn't necessarily have to be aware of this ping ponging action. It just knows it always has uh, the current pointer to the buffer that I can work on. In this way, I have a nice area to work in memory that I know is not going to get overwritten by some other process. So um, so that's it for the example. Now, once again, I, I, I want to I stress, this is not necessarily the most elegant way to do a ping pong buffer, but this is the way I like to show because I think it's the most straightforward. You could Another way to do this is instead of having two separate one-dimensional arrays, you have one two-dimensional arrays that you can kind of have uh, an index into. But at the end of the day, it ends up to be the same amount of code. It kind of compiles down to the same object code, so it doesn't matter. So I hope this is a good uh, explanation, a top-level review for a ping-pong buffer. So uh, whenever you want to create your own, uh, it, it's much easier to do.